little slower than normal. Well, my low gears got drunk up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. My climbing gear is not working as good. I praise the Lord for his goodness. I thank God for Temple Baptist and just letting us be here once again. And the uh, preacher asked me the other day about how long we've been coming. Well, I found in my records, I come back, well, we were here in 2001. And Doc, I think you come a couple of years before I got here. And then I found a, a Temple Baptist in 2000, but I didn't put Gulfport down. So I don't know where it was at then, amen? But it could have been here, but I know in 2001, we uh, had the privilege of coming, and we appreciate that so very much. The church has ministered to us greatly through the years. Thank you for all the prayers and support and everything that you've done for Miss Ming and I. And it's, it's always a blessing to be able to uh, be in the same service with my friend, Brother Noah Fry. Hey, man. And I thank the Lord for Brother Noah. He's been a blessing, yeah. inspiration to me. And this morning's message in Sunday school was a, especially a blessing. I said, Doc, I didn't get the outline, but I sure would like to have it. He said, I'll never grab it off. I said, good. I'll squeeze some more juice out of it somewhere down the way. He said, you preach Brother Noah's prize message. I'll preach yours if you're not careful. <laughs> Amen. I don't claim originality. Amen. I, I milk a lot of cows. But I try to Turn them on butter. They want to see that, and I pick it up, amen. But uh, see, that's borrowed, amen. The only thing that's not borrowed about me is salvation. Amen. That came straight from Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. Second hand about that. That's, uh, that's, that's first hand. Thank God for back in 1959 when he reached down and saved this old sinner. He changed amen. his life and gave a new direction. And I appreciate so much God. Let me have a part in this work. Amen. I appreciated the young people that was in the service this morning, and there's a few young folk here tonight, and I appreciate so much you being here. I thank God for young people, Amen. and uh, I enjoy young people, all ages. Yeah. This generation gap is a bunch of foolishness. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I get good fellowship out of even the little ones down in junior and down in that, that age group, I just sit down and talk. I had a little boy come up to me that long ago. He said, Preacher, he said, I enjoyed the service. I said, well, I'm glad. And he looked at me then and he said, I actually understood it. <laughs> and boy, I tell you, that was a blessing. <laughs> now, the youngest yeah. did it. Yeah. So, Amen. no excuse for the rest of us. But anyhow, turn your Bibles tonight to the book of Psalm 61. Psalm 61, this quarter to seven, we'll do our best to get to this in a timely manner. Don't know what that'll be, but we'll do our best to do it, amen. There are eight verses here tonight in this passage of Scripture. This is a song of David, and they tell me that this is a time of great stress in David's life. Absalom, you know Absalom's son, rebelled against him, and he wanted to kill his old daddy. He wanted to throw him all to himself. And David had many enemies through his life, in his, in his family, out of his family. Uh, David's life was everything but easy. It was, uh, it was difficult. But David's God was a great God. Amen. And thank God he's, a, he's the God of heaven, the only, the one, the true, the living. And David knew that. And therefore, David writes these precious words. So the sweet psalmist of Israel gives to us these powerful eight verses. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Selah. 
For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Father, thank you tonight for the reading of the word. Pray to God for the sweet touch of God now upon our hearts. Open our eyes that we may see wondrous things out of thy law. Lord, we know tonight that there were times in your men of old that they saw you who is invisible. The Lord, they were able to endure. Father, I've been looking at this, these two words on the pulpit ever since I got here. Don't quit. Oh, dear God, help us. As your children, not quit. Help us, dear God, grab a fresh handful of responsibility, enjoy with it, and go forth and do that which you'd have us to do. Sow the seed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the illustration this morning concerning the leaky bucket. Oh, dear God, hide water the seed that brought forth the flowers. Thank you. Now, dear Lord, would you help us here tonight? We need you. Lord, you said without me you can do nothing so all the singing all the preaching everything comes to zero zero without you oh how we pray for your touch on our hearts dear god on our hearts it's not the brother it's not the sister that stands in need it's our heart personally Amen. while i pray tonight dear god that we'll not be busy looking around at others We'll take the time to look within and God deal with us and we'll praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'd like to think with you tonight on the subject, David's vows to God. And David does make some vows to God. And notice in the first of all, we'll just go with verse 1 and walk on down through these eight verses. Get the mule out, climb a little bit, and then get these eight verses. That's eight rows. And we're going to put me on the boat. Amen. Amen. And we're going to, I don't know, there might be a few stumps in here. Might be, I don't know. So old crab grass. Plow might jump out of the ground. Uh, and you might bulk on me. But nonetheless, uh, we're going to try to get these eight roads. Amen. Notice in verse 1, David's plea. David's plea. You know, Job said, man that's born of woman is few days and full of trouble. I think if you've been alive very long, you'd have to say amen right back. Life is not an easy thing. It's like a roller coaster. Yeah. But there's a God in heaven who gives us grace that we can bear. But in order to know what we're talking about, you have to have a proper relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. You have to be saved. Amen. This Bible is food for the redeemed. Now, it is the key that unlocks the door to heaven. It is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believeth. But I say tonight that there has to be a relationship. You have to come to that place that you say yes to Jesus and accept him as your personal Savior. Once you have been saved by the grace of God, God then takes you on a journey. And that journey does not stop until he walks you inside those gates of pearl. Amen. Beloved, as long as you're on this earth, you're going to need his hand every day. Amen. You're going to need his guidance every day. You're going to need him to speak from his word to your heart every day. And I'm glad that God does speak to our hearts. I'm glad that God is not silent that uh, his voice is heard all across this world, not just on one day of the week, but any time you open the book, God has something to say. Amen. And beloved, when God says it, he'll explain it to you if you'll just take the time to listen. Amen. Sometimes we get in a hurry. We want God to do everything now or yesterday. 
the truth of it is, what God has to say is so important, God needs our undivided attention. That's right. It's not for His, it's for us. What God does is for us. God needs nothing tonight, but we need everything. Amen. And He's the great provider. But notice in verse 1, now as we get through this, in, in his, his plea, verse 1, Hear my cry, attend unto my prayer. Now, David's saying, God, I want, to, I want to plead with you for just a little bit. And when I talk to you, I, I want you to hear me. Is that not the purpose of prayer to start with? Yes. Why go back in the prayer room? Why go on your knees and pray if you don't expect a person to hear you? God is more than an imagination or a thought. Right. That's right. God is real. Amen. God is a person. And that person has power. And though you cannot see him, he's there. And he listens to what you have to say. And David is saying, Amen. God, would you hear my cry? And then he says, attend unto my prayer. Now you've listened to me. Now, God, would you answer and how sweet it is when you pray and God gives an answer. Amen. I saw God answer this uh, week prayer. There was a dear lady in South Carolina. Uh, she was in one of our meetings, and after the meeting was over, uh, she went home, and it was for shortly thereafter she fell and uh, broke one of the vertebrae in her neck. And uh, she was in surgery. She's had a lot of surgical problems through the years. And they said if she had such a fall, she'd probably paralyze the rest of her life. Well, they were able to do the surgery, and thank God she's not paralyzed. But the pain that management was so bad, I mean, they couldn't get it under control. And she couldn't stand the pain. And uh, they were just having time coming up with the right formula. And by the grace of God, I mean, they worked for it for, with it for hours. And uh, we had prayer. And God heard and answered prayer. They found the combination. And she was able to talk to me. And I thank God that uh, God hears and answers prayer. Amen. 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 That's just one prayer. Many others that God hears and answers and has. So attend unto my, my prayer. That's his plea. That's my plea tonight. God listen to me. Hear me and move for our betterment Amen. and your glory. Then notice, secondly, his promise. David's promise. He said, I will cry unto thee. I will cry unto thee from the ends of the earth, he says, I will cry. That God is, he's making God a promise. You know, David's saying, God, I'm going to include you in all of my life. I'm afraid there's so many people that just wants to include, include God in certain parts Amen. of her life. Yes, sir. But beloved, God wants in on all Amen. of it. And I'm glad that David said, I'm going to cry unto thee. And then he went on to say, when my heart is overwhelmed. It's amazing to me how many people quit church, quit church, just simply stop living for the Lord, when things begin to go wrong, they sour on them. Right. Oh, that's no time to quit. Right. That's the time to draw nigh. Right. That's the time to come where you get your strength. Amen. And so David said, God, when my heart is overwhelmed. And in the ministry, there are overwhelming moments. In the pastorate, there are overwhelming moments. In evangelism, there are overwhelming moments moments. I've lived long enough that I had the privilege of pastoring 34 years and been in evangelism for the last 23 years. And I can say that there are moments in the ministry that are just beyond anything that you're capable of handling. Overwhelming. But God hears us in those overwhelming moments. Sometimes you go to the doctor and he'll give you more in what he said than you're prepared to endure. Right. He'll give you news about your health that will literally shatter 
every, every bit of your courage and just leave you standing there trembling like a leaf in the wind. But there's a God in heaven Amen. who's saying, I've got it, son. It's all right. Amen. Amen. Brother Michael years ago wrote that song uh, of whether I go or whether I stay. I'm a winner either way. Amen. Oh, beloved, God gives grace. He gives grace for the living to live. He gives grace for the dying to die. Amen. Yeah. God's grace is amazing. Yes, and it's always sufficient. Yes, the Bible says where sin did abound, the grace of God did much more abound. Yes. And so David's promises, God when uh, my heart is overwhelmed, I'm going to cry. Then he makes a request, he says, lead me to the rock. That's his promise. He saying, God, if you'll lead, I'll follow. Why ask for leadership if you don't plan to follow? So David is saying, God, if you'll lead me, I will follow. Now there's been days gone by, I've heard a lot of people say, and I've been in the way the Lord led me. And they were saying something, they made a decision, and they now are saying the Lord is led. But if you read that in its context, <laughs> that statement is not a statement about the future. That is a statement looking over your shoulder at the past that you have done what God told you to do, and now it's obvious that it was God that told you to do it. <laughs> Eliezer could say, I been in the way the Lord has led me. In other words, I followed his leadership, and now God is answering prayer. And I'm thankful that David is saying, God, if you'll lead me, I'll follow. The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. I'm thankful for the leadership of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That speaks of God's leadership again in our lives. So he promises to follow. And then he says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The rock is stability. The rock is stability. And David says, there's something higher than I. There's something bigger than you and me. I'm afraid there's a lot of people, their lives just say it's involved what's in their yard, their life, whatever is on their plate. That's all that's taking place. Now, beloved, that's not the way the Bible predict, uh, but just picture say. You see, uh, God is, he is a rock that is higher than you and I. Right. We, in the time of trouble and storm, we have got a hiding place. In a time when things are slippery, we got a solid foundation. The precious word of God. And so he, his plea in verse 1, his promise in verse 2. But notice verse 3. I love verse 3. Verse 3 says, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. He says, For thou hast been. That's past tense. He says, Thou hast been. This is his pondering. Is pondering. In other words, he's looking over his shoulder. I've heard people say, well, you ought not look back. Well, it's more than what you're going to look back for. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking back to go say, well, boy, it's better back there than it is up here. And better back in the world than it is here. No, that's that's looking back. That's lot, lot, lot of life. But I believe that in the Christian's life, you and I ought to be looking back quite often. We look back at the prayers that God has answered. Amen. We look how God's led us through uh, areas that absolutely we wonder how in the world we're going to make it. Amen. We look back and see the greatness of God in the past and the greatness of God of the yesterday gives us courage to face today. That's right. Because He changes not. He's the same yesterday and forever. I watched God answer prayer uh, concerning places to build churches and ministries and things we had need of.
And I've watched God do things that absolutely only God could do. That's right. And those things encouraged me to see. When I look back, I remember prayer rooms where we used to gather up into the prayer rooms and have about 25, 30 men. It was not unusual to have that many in the prayer room. And the uh, old tile floor. And I can see tears all over that floor. And then you could hear them crying and say, Oh, God, save. And they would beg God to save friends, neighbors, loved ones, family. If God saved, and then I've heard even people say in that prayer room, Have you ever trusted Christ? Because they'd invite somebody up there that wasn't used to going. And I've actually seen people saved in the prayer room, and it was pool of tears Lord. all over the place. Yeah. When I look at that, I say, oh God, would you do that again? Yeah. Oh yes, I want to see that again. And what I've seen yesterday, I'm talking about yesterday's, encourages my heart to face today in the future. Right. I remember in Wilson just a few weeks back, we were in the prayer room and young helicopter pilot, a God got a hold of his heart, and I believe he touched the hem of the master's robe. But oh, when he prayed, uh, he began, I, he was right beside me. And that young man, his tears was puddling in that metal chair that he was kneeling down in front of. And uh, after it was all over with, the pastor and a couple of fellows came by as if to console him. And I thought, oh no. Oh, he's not the one that needs ministry to here. It's the rest of us. That's right. And I walked out of that room going to the pulpit. And as I walked out of the room, uh, I had to stop. Stop before I got to the auditorium. And turn my face to the wall. And I said, oh God, I'm cold. My heart's like an icebox. My tears are drying up. I don't have that compassion. That young man's tears in that chair was a rebuke of the coldness of my own heart. And I'll tell you one thing. When I see the yesterdays, how God is moved, yes, I cry again. Brother Fry, do it again, God. Do it again. Yes. Give me my tears back. Let me have the brokenness of my souls back. Let me have the care for those that are without God. As I should have. And so he pondered. Thou his being. And in his pondering he spoke of two things. Shelter and strong tower. Now when he says thou his been. I believe that he was looking back. And remember the day when he kept his daddy's sheep. And that was a lion. And how the lion got the sheep. He went after the lion. And he took the sheep away from the lion. Now that's no small task. You picture that. I mean, you don't have a Gatling gun going hunting. Or you got a pocket full of rocks and a sling and a couple sticks. Yeah. A rod and a staff. And then he remembers the time when God, he went out there and got a bear. My goodness, it's getting bigger all the time from a lion to a bear. And then he remembers a day that is an anointed lad. He's anointed when he went down to the valley of Allah Amen. and faced Goliath. Samuel's already been there, poured the oil on him, and he's the next king of Israel. And he went down into that valley to face that giant in the name of the Lord God Jehovah himself. And beloved, when David went down, he remembered how that God gave the victory. Amen. Gave the victory over the lion, gave the victory over the bear. Gave the victory over the giant. And then when Saul would have pinned him to the wall of the javelin, he remembers how that God delivered him from that. You see, it does good to go back and see what God's done in your past. Amen. Think right here at the battles. Think right here on this corner at the, at the trials and how that even nature itself has just done battle with this church. And this building was built in 
and being built. Tornado. The hurricanes. Think of all the struggles. And yet here you are today. This place is nothing more but a visible evidence of what God has done in the past. Souls have been saved. Preacher boys has been sent out. What God's done yesterday, very capable of doing today. Amen. God has not changed. We need to get that under our belt. God has not changed. That's right. I'm no longer 19 year old. I'm no longer that young preacher. I got saved at the age of 19, been preaching ever since. I'm 79. And when we go on the road, I am reminded when I get tired, when the way gets weary, I'm reminded that God is the same. Oh, beloved, because He is the same. In my heart, there rings a melody. Amen. All the joy thou hast been. And by the way, the strong tower gives us an advantage point. Christians always have an advantage point. Yeah. The world has to fight some of the same battles of life that you fight. But they don't have the advantage you've got. Amen. Beloved, you and I are more than conquerors, right. but only through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 With Christ, we can do anything. With Christ, we can overcome. With Christ, we can be victors instead of victims. With Christ. And I'm so thankful that when I look back and see the pathway, I see the wrestling of health. I see the times of trouble. I see the days that I thought that I'd never stand in the pulpit again. I would not even be alive now. And by the grace of God, here I am. So now when a pain hits me, I remember what God has done. May not do it again. But I know what he's done. And what he's done gives me hope. So I just press on like he's going to do it. Amen. 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 That's right. Notice verse 4. Not only his plea, verse 1, his promise, verse 2, his pondering, verse 3, his place of blessing, tabernacle, place of worship, cover of thy wings. You know, David do something about the tabernacle, amen. It's a place of worship. And David remembers a place of worship. Boy, I like church. Yeah, I like that singing fellow. Yeah. I like that about the cross. Yeah. And that about the blood, about the sin. Yeah. I tell you, no wonder you shout. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's good to shout. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, these days I'm not to do. Forget my arthritis. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And shout again. I do it once in a while now, just not like I used to. I'd embarrass you used to. You wouldn't look at this little fat man tonight and think he ever jumped up the railings and run them, did you? Yeah, I'd like wave him back here. In the choir, I'd run that thing, jump on the jumped out here on the stands. Could not. Well, I wouldn't jump today. <laughs> I'd need mattresses everywhere. <laughs> Place of worship, but also a cover to thy wings. I believe what David's done, David's gone into the Holy of Holy, and he's gone back there to the mercy seat. And the chair beams of their wings, in God's presence, between those wings of the chair beams, and when David talks about the cover of thy wings, he's talking about being in there in the presence of God. Hey. Oh, beloved, there isn't anything like the presence of God. Right, I've seen it melt the heart in a second. I've been, I've been sitting in church and, and my heart just seems so hard and so cold. And I look around and I say, the Lord, they sure are enjoying this. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting what they're getting. Oh, I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood. I'm going to heaven. But I'm not tapped in like they're tapped in right now. 
And I say, oh God, I need some help. <coughs> By the time I think it's all over with, sweet Holy Ghost of God come down, yes. grab my heart and hug it. Yes. Oh, I tell you right now, nothing like the presence of God. Amen. Oh, nothing like the presence of God. Leave there on my face, just all full of tears. There isn't anything uglier than a man crying. Yeah. He gets his face all tore up. Doc, you talked about that man this morning had an ugly face. I remember Brother Billy Kelly. I can remember, I've seen him crying now. Well, Brother Billy Kelly cried. He's an ugly man when he was crying. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he was, a, he was a sweet man when he was crying. I'll tell you, I, I want to go. I'd rather go out of the church. Somebody's look and say to me, or say about me, what the world's wrong with him? My goodness, he just got all tore up. I don't know that he said about me that said, boy, he looks good. Because I've heard him say that about dead people. That's right. He looks good. <laughs> oh, if, if God would grant me one wish, if I got to go that way of the grave, and somebody walks at my, up at my casket and says, boy, he looks good, I'd like to be able to just wink at him. <laughs> in verse 5. For thou, O God, hast hurt my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Two things in that verse of Scripture. His pledge, God's hurt, his vows. His vows are the I will. Start up in verse 2. He says, will I cry? In other words, I will cry. That's the first vow. Look in verse 4. He says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. That's the place of worship. He vowed to do that. He said, I will trust in the cover of thy wings and the protection of thy wings and presence. I promise to do that. And then he says, in verse 8, so will I sing, or I will sing. David makes vows in this chapter. Oh, beloved, have you ever made any vows to God? It's important that we do. Amen. But when you vow to God, remember, it's serious. Amen. You just shouldn't vow to God unless in your heart of hearts you intend with everything within you by the grace of God to keep that vow. That's right. God takes vows very seriously. That's right. And David said, God, I'm going to do these things. By the grace of God, I'm going to do some things. Number one, by the grace of God, I intend to keep on tithing. I vowed long ago, I'm a tither. Amen. Not ashamed of it, thankful for it. Amen. Amen. Not only that, but I'm going to be faithful in church. Yeah. Amen. I vowed that. I vowed that I'm going to try to be a soul winner. There's some things that you and I need to make a vow to God. Amen. We just need to be faithful. Now, when you make a vow, you be assured it will be challenged because someone hears you say it besides God. That's right. And that someone's not so free. Right. That someone knows every weakness that you've got. Mm -hmm. He studied you, the handbook on your life, he knows your ups and downs. He knows what ticks you off. He knows what will upset you the most. That's right. But you remember this. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Amen. God will go with you all the way. Amen. And so David makes his vows to God. Then verse 6, we've got to put the mule in the barn. Verse 6, his prolonged life. Verse 6 says, Thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. There's a long life here for the king. God prolongs his life. Look at verse 7, his preserving. His abiding for, for, before God forever. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. 
is abiding before God forever, God will preserve you and mercy and truth are used. Truth is marvelous. It sets you free. Amen. The truth of God. I like the song the fellows just got through singing about not compromising. Oh, the word of God. Keep it right. Just keep on. Truth don't need apologizing for. Truth just needs to be, to be told. Yeah. Truth, you don't even have to back up truth. Truth will back itself up. Amen. Truth will never call for your Calvary to come to the rescue. Truth carries its own Calvary. Amen. Thank God the truth is powerful. Amen. Jesus said, I am the truth. Amen. And I am the way. Amen. Not only do you find his preserving, God preserving him, but not in the tent, but in God's presence forever. That's what it's talking about. Verse 8, we're done. Mules in the barn. Verse 8. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. There are four things in this verse. Look at it. It's praising God now. Praising, I'm going to sing praises unto God's name. There's no other name like that name. There's one name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. That name is Jesus. Amen. Thank God. The time forever. We have worship service, we say, from this hour to that hour. But we're fixing to go to a land we're going home. Yes. And we're fixing to get in the service that there is no the end. That's right. Amen. I mean, it's, you talk about jubilee. It had not entered our heart or mind what God's got prepared. Amen. But I can tell you one thing. It's better than anything we've known down here. Amen. Praising enabled David to daily perform his vows. It is it is easier to be a singing Christian than one that doesn't sing. That's right. Singing somehow or another lifts the soul, lifts the spirit. And I believe we ought to sing praises unto God. Amen. 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 You say, well, I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. We're not talking about buckets. Amen. Or carrying tunes. Amen. We're just talking about praising God. Amen. 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 You know, sometimes we just sort of off just right out of just embarrass ourselves. That's right. I mean, if you've never embarrassed yourself, you hadn't lived yet. That's right. Now, I'm talking about personal embarrassment now. Amen. I mean, just, just haul off and be in the mall, be somewhere else, run it back, let it rip. Now, let me come at you a little white coats. <laughs> Just go ahead and sing to get you all tied up. <laughs> Amen. I believe singing enables us to carry out our vows easier. Amen. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Amen. There's a lot of poison in this world. There's a lot of things that get in our hearts and lives and minds that drain our strength. But, oh, beloved, when you start thinking about God, and you think about His provision and His Word and all that, and you begin to sing, you begin to put in a song, and you begin to praise God. Did you know that you can't praise God and grumble at the same time? Amen. You can't praise God and gripe. No. You can't praise God and gossip. I mean, when you praise God, that's all that you can do, because otherwise you're not praising God. Well, God's not done this, and God's not done that, and God's not done the other. Oh, beloved, you don't know altogether what God's done. I found out long ago that God does things, and I might find it out years later. But God does something. 
You may go to a service and think that God did nothing. I'll assure you that any time this book is open, any time the Word of God is preached, that God is doing something in somebody's heart. Amen. Amen. The other night we were in the revival meeting and I had no idea what God was doing. That particular night, there was no real activity at the altar. Kind of one of those nights you think, well, I, I sure fouled out this time. But only to come to find out that God was working in hearts and deep conviction. Conviction. You, people don't shout under conviction. Conviction's hard to deal with. Come to find out this lady in the service was under deep conviction. Called up the pastor, said, Pastor, I've got to get it right. Her home was all messed up, and she and her husband had separated. And she said, Preacher, I've been playing religion all these years. I've been playing church. She said, But I'm not saved. I'm not saved. I I've been pretending and God's been dealing with me. And this whole week, God won't let me rest. She said, I've got to get settled. And she got saved. And guess what? Home went back together. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Only God does stuff like that. Amen. Only God. So the singing of God's praise and his resolve is to be faithful. That I may daily perform my vows daily. If I'm sucking at it, if I'm breathing God's good option, I ought to be performing my vows. Right. Amen? Amen. Every one of you that's married here tonight, you said vows to each other. Well, I got news for you. When you got saved, that was some vows exchanged. Jesus says, if you'll call, I'll answer. If you'll ask, you'll receive. And when you said, Lord, I'm a sinner, I repent, I receive, God kept his word. Amen. 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 God kept his word. I told this Wednesday night, I'd like to get the mule in the bar. I was, I was dreaming. I had dreams all the I tell you, I don't believe anybody has any dreams like I do. They're crazy. But this one made sense. That I was dreaming and I was singing in a dream. And I was singing a song, Hallelujah to the Lamb. I never heard these words, never heard this too. And I woke up, my wife said, You're singing. I said, No. And I grabbed my pencil and paper and I jotted it down. I may have it in here somewhere. And uh, it's, uh, man, if you look at it, you I'm working to make heads or tails out of that. Hieroglyphics, no, diff no more difficult than, than this little I've got. But I, I wrote it down, and it goes like this just a little bit of it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He is the great I Am. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He was born in Bethlehem. He would die for Adam's sin. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He would go to Calvary. And I for you and me, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. He was crucified and died, on three days he did arise, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He ascended up then, with a promise of come again, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He is the great I Am. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. And that, my mule just went to the bar. Amen. Let me ask you a question.
question. Are you saved? Is it real? Is it real? If you're saved, are you enjoying the journey? God intends for you to enjoy the journey. At the moment, if your plate's got a lot on it, remember, God had left you. He's right there. 